Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Education Abroad Virtual Fair Week. I'm Whitney Ewing, and I'm the Assistant Director in the Center for Global Education, and I focus primarily on study abroad programs. I want to go ahead and thank Leanne Allen, um, our partner from Macquarie University, for being here. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about the Ma Macquarie University and what it's like to live and learn in Australia for a semester. Um, just a couple things before we start. All participants, except for our presenters, are muted. If you do have any questions, please use the question feature in the GoToWebinar panel to type in and share your question. Um, at the end of the presentation, I'll go ahead and sort through those questions, and then I will um, ask Leanne the question and she can go ahead and answer that for us. A uh, couple reminders, when you are ready after this presentation, please go ahead and make an appointment with an Education Abroad Advisor. Um, you'll be able to then discuss your future study abroad plans and start the process. Um, our fall 2021, so this would be at Macquarie, July through about November um, semester uh, 2021. Those applications are going to be due in November, November 10th, um, so in just a couple, few weeks' time. And let's see, other things that I'm going to link in the chat box are going to be a link to the homepage where you can explore studying abroad by your major, a link to our brand new brochure that looks absolutely lovely. Here's pictures of our study abroad students. Um, as well as the link to sign up for more virtual fair events. But without further ado, I'm going to pass it along to Leanne. Leanne, thank you for coming to us live from California. <laughs> my pleasure. Thanks for having me and thanks for joining us today. Um, as Whitney said, my name is Leanne Allen and I represent Macquarie University, which is in Sydney, Australia. Um, for anyone who hasn't been to Australia or to Sydney, it's a really beautiful city. Um, to get there from Chicago, you generally have to take about two flights, whether you go from Chicago down to Dallas and into Sydney or to Los Angeles or San Francisco. Um, or you could even fly from um, Chicago straight through to Auckland and then across to Sydney. So quite a few different options um, to sort of break up the trip a little bit, uh, generally speaking from LA to uh, Sydney's about a 12, 13 hour flight from Dallas. It's a bit more brutal. It's about a 17, 18 hour flight. Um, and I'm not sure what it is from Chicago to Auckland. It's I'd imagine probably around 14 to 15 hours. Um, but generally you leave the US in the evening um, around 10 or 11 o'clock at night and get into Sydney in the morning. So you generally use that time for sleeping and a little bit of movies. So it's not so horrifying. Um, and once you get there, you land in this beautiful city. So it makes it all worthwhile. Um, one in four Australians are actually born overseas. Uh, so it's a very multicultural society in Australia and something we're really proud of. Um, and that's really shown in um, everyday life in Sydney, like the food um, that's available and the cultural events as well. So there's always something happening. Australians take their sports very seriously. So you'll have to choose an Australian football team um, to go for once you're in Australia, which we call barracking, um, I guess similar to the routing here in the US. Um, and then uh, lots of cricket as well, which is a very Australian or British colonial sport, um, depending on which semester you're coming in. So lots of things happening. Um, Macquarie itself is about 20 minutes from the downtown area of, in Sydney. So we have a train station on campus that comes direct into the city. So best of both worlds, that big cosmopolitan city experience um, with the incredible beaches and then you can retreat back to campus, which is a really pretty parkland university. We have about 40,000 students and of that there are about 12,000 international students. So very diverse student population as well. I did a Master of International Relations at the university um, and certainly think that was one of the coolest things about studying there is people from literally all around the world to be learning Middle Eastern studies or European studies with people from those corners of the world makes it so much more impactful so depending on what you're studying that could be really positive um, but generally speaking anything you're studying that is a positive as well um, just on the location again, so with the train on campus that goes straight into the city, um, it really makes things connected. We're about an hour away from the airport, um, which is helpful if you're going on weekend trips. Um, but certainly when you arrive into Sydney for the first time, we will pick you up at the airport and take you back to the accommodation. Um, Manly Beach over here is one of our really popular beaches as well as Bondi Beach and generally students. Um, and all Sydney siders have a favourite, so you have to pick one or the other. 
I think at the moment I'm a manly girl, but it depends. They're both pretty amazing beaches. Um, Taronga Zoo is also another really pretty part of Sydney. Um, it's one of obviously the biggest zoo there. Um, and they say the giraffes have the best real estate in Australia because it looks right out over to the Sydney Harbour um, Bridge and the entire city as well, which is pretty spectacular. The bridge as well, you can um, go for walks along the bridge and you can also climb the bridge, which is a pretty cool experience um, if you want to check out something like that. And just but about an hour and a half to two hours um, north east of the, sorry, northwest of the city, um, we have the Blue Mountains National Park, which is a really incredible um, park nature and you will certainly see lots of kangaroos and koalas and um, all our beautiful animals out there as well. Um, being a student at Macquarie um, is somewhat similar to what you would expect to be a student here in the US. So we have lots of clubs and associations and sports that you can join um, and so many different ways to get involved and make it a really unique experience while you're there. Um, we have a big sports and aquatic centre and it's Olympic sized swimming pool as well, um, which is pretty cool all outdoors because our weather allows that. Um, speaking of weather, uh, in the summer it can get upwards of 90 degrees um, and in the winter it can be sort of, you know, you know, if it's below 65 degrees, we'll complain it's too cold. So um, you certainly will be fine um, not having the weather you've got in Illinois by any stretch of the imagination. It very rarely snows in Australia, although we do have one or two um, ski mountains um, that a lot of Americans say aren't that great compared to what you find here. Um, but it sort of just shows the difference in um, sort of temperature um, and weather that's available across Australia as well. Um, so in terms of area of study, we're a pretty comprehensive university, lots of different um, courses available. You're able to study three or four classes on your semester abroad with us, although we um, recommend probably four units if um, that fits in, um, but have a chat to the Education Abroad Office and they'll work with you to determine what's best. We generally recommend using as many um, of your uh, elective classes that you can just to try different um, programs that are available. Um, but if you have core units that you need to take while you're um, studying with us, you should most likely will be able to find what you need um, because we have so much on offer as well. Um, we recommend trying a couple of courses that aren't available here in the US like um, Indigenous Australian Studies or Australian Media and Television. Um, we have some really unique classes um, that you can look into. There are thousands of units that are available so it can be pretty overwhelming for students um, and for that reason we have study abroad certificates as well. So I think there's about 15 certificates at the moment that you could choose from and it's like business in Australia or media and communications from an international perspective. It's just um, a couple of examples of what is available. Um, security studies is another one, um, which is obviously a really important topic at the moment. So if you cho do choose to take one of those certificates, um, you can choose three or four of those classes. Um, and then at the end of it, you'll receive a certificate saying that your study abroad semester was um, you specialising in this particular area. So um, that's just sort of to help you narrow down because it can be pretty overwhelming when you look at our unit guides and everything that is available. Um, so worth considering that, but of course it does depend on what you're studying and what classes you need to take um, while you're on your study abroad semester. Another really cool program that Macquarie offers is the Global Leadership Program. So on your study abroad semester with us, you're able to do the certificate. Um, there's about four colloquia you need to take, which are part of different topics. Um, and then you get uh, an attendance or um, certificate essentially um, and they can be really different so foreign affairs is quite a popular one I went to a really interesting um, take with uh, one of the ambassadors from Ma Romania who was in Australia and he was talking about sort of the difference in politics between Romania and the US and Australia and sort of how they see the world so some really fascinating talks happen as part of this as well um, it's free to be part of the program um, and you get a certificate at the end saying you have completed and you also get um, a reference letter which can be super Super helpful when you're applying for jobs um, once you graduate as well. Um, it isn't kept credit bearing but you will get a little um, tra uh, trans on your transcript I should say there will be a note saying that you have successfully finished this program um, which is pretty cool. I definitely recommend you look into this. You don't have to sign up before you arrive in Australia um, but most of our study abroad students do do it and find it really invaluable with the networking um, and knowledge sharing skills that are available too. So certainly check that out when you are arrive on campus.
Um, accommodation, obviously really important when you're thinking about coming to Australia. We have quite a few different options, um, but most students from NCC do stay at the Macquarie University, Macquarie University Village, sorry, um, which you can see some images here. You live in a townhouse with five or six other students. You have your own bedroom and your own bathroom. Um, Australian students generally find it um, a bit weird that Americans share bedrooms in college. Um, so that's one cool um, cultural experience you get to have when studying in Australia is your own bedroom and your own bathroom. One important thing to remember is we don't often have meal plans as you would find here in the US. So in Australia, they're generally assigned with um, the accommodation options. In the Macquarie University Village, you'll have a kitchen and a living area. And so you'll have to do your own shopping um, and then cooking yourself. But there's a huge shopping centre um, right outside of campus called the Macquarie Centre. Um, and they claim to have the most international brands under one roof in the Southern Hemisphere, um, which I find a little funny because there's not much competition in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, but it's sort of certainly lots of um, sort of shops uh, and supermarkets and grocery stores there where you can do your shopping. Um, and a hot tip for you, if you go in about two or three o'clock in the afternoon, um, a lot of the food court stores have everything half price. Um, so you're able to just go um, in and get um, food for a couple of meals at a very discounted rate. Um, university itself is a very sustainable campus. Um, and we take great pride in that. And so on a Wednesday, we actually have a farmer's market um, right in the center of courtyard where students are coming in um, and they're able to um, buy fruit and veg straight off the farmers in the local communities. That's another great way to get fresh produce um, at a reasonable price as well. So quite a few different options there. Um, the Macquarie University Village, I think, is quintessential Australian as well. There's really big, beautiful gum trees around um, and it's not uncommon to find a koala out there. So you should definitely keep an eye out for that as you leave your house in the morning to head to college. Um, in terms of... Uh, the support on uh, on campus once you arrive, as I was saying, will pick you up at the airport and take you back to campus. Um, we also have 24 hour, seven day a week support services available for students. So if you're feeling a bit homesick, um, you just wanna to talk to someone, or if you've been out and you've accidentally lost your wallet and you just need access to emergency money, we'll help you with that as well. Um, so lots and lots of support available there. Um, Macquarie actually owns and operates its own hospital on campus as well. So we have a doctor's clinic, um, that students get free access to um, and you do have full health care insurance while you're in Australia um, it's actually associated with your student visa so once you accept your place as a study abroad student at the university you purchase overseas health care insurance for that first semester um, that you're with us and that covers you for the full duration so you shouldn't have any out-of-pocket medical expenses while in Australia which is super important as well um, we have a numeracy centre and an English um, centre as well. So, you know, the first couple of weeks as you're getting used to the Australian academics, it's well worth um, going and just um, requesting some assistance um, just to make sure you're okay and aware of how we do our essays because it can be a little different to the US system as well. Um, so much different support available. Um, our ac academics are giving that as well. We have an open door policy. So um, every academic needs to um, sort of have very clearly um, office hours where you can go in and chat to them. And I definitely recommend students make the most of that because when they're assessing your um, essays and assignments, you certainly want them to think of you um, as you're doing that. Maybe it'll get you a couple of extra grades. Um, we do have lectures and tutorials as part of all our courses. So a lecture may have upwards of 200 students, um, whereas a tutorial is generally capped at around 18 to 22 students. And that's when you really get to know the academics. Um, interestingly, uh, our grades work a little differently as well. So um, you will generally have three to four assessments per class, per semester. Um, some have less than that. A couple of our business school courses just have one exam at the end of the semester and that's 100% of your grade. It's pretty brutal, but you can certainly see that well in advance of choosing your subject. So if that sounds horrible, you don't want that, that's okay. Just don't choose that class. Um, you'll have quite a few other options. Um, but generally speaking, um, like if you're doing a class in the Faculty of Arts, you'll probably have like a 20% of your grade will be um, your participation in the tutorials and talking up and the debates and that sort of thing. Maybe 30% um, will be the final assessment and then you'll probably have about a 25% um, midterm um, exam or assessment um, and then another um, assessment worth another 25% that could be a presentation or um, a response to an article or something like that. Um, but again, our unit guides are very um, detailed. So you'll know exactly what your assessments are and when they're due well in advance of actually starting at the university. 
Um, we also have career and employment services. Um, so if you are thinking about getting a job in the semester that you are with us in Australia, um, you could certainly go there and they'll make sure that your CV or resume is up to standards and what an Australian um, business would expect. Um, and they can help you with um, interview skills and that sort of thing as well. And they also have a full list of the programs that are uh, jobs and programs that are available to you. So speaking of employment services, um, how much does this all cost? So generally speaking, we recommend students have access to about four or five thousand um, dollars to live comfortably in Australia um, for that semester that you're with us. Um, that includes like your food, um, I think your accommodation as well, but we would have to check that with Whitney Shirley. Um, and also uh, like your traveling um, and that sort of thing. So um, you could certainly live very comfortably. Of course, the more travel you want to do, the more money you'll need. Um, but that is for most things in life. Um, so as I was saying, you can work while studying. Students can work up to 20 hours per week during semester and full time in non-teaching weeks. Um, so if you're there for a, the, essentially if you're coming for a second semester, so your full semester, you'd start with us um, at the end of July. You'd do a two week, about a 12 week semester with a two week mid semester break. And you're all done generally by the last week of November. So you probably have some time to stay in Australia and work if you want to or travel before returning to the US and starting the semester here in the, um, January. So it can be pretty flexible in that regard um, and certainly opportunities to work. Although I generally recommend students don't, um, if you're only there for a semester, by the time you sort of get settled in, in, um, and get used to the campus and start making friends and have a great life. Um, often the time ends pretty quickly, um, but it's certainly an option anyway. Um, you are able to keep your scholarship. So again, speak to the education abroad office about that. Um, and as I've been talking about, travel opportunities are huge. So Australia is a ginormous country as well. We're geographically quite similar to the United States. A big difference is we have 24 million people, I think compared to about 360 million people here in the US. Um, and interestingly, about 90% uh, of Australians live within 60 miles of the coast. Um, so a pretty phenomenal country, especially um, in the regional outback area is to check out if you've got that ability. Um, New Zealand is a three hour flight across the ocean um, or a lot of students make the most of being in Australia and checking out Southeast Asia, um, going to Bali and Thailand and Vietnam as well between their studies. Um, so, so many amazing opportunities to travel when you are in Australia that I recommend you make the most of. Um, and of course, make sure you're thinking about budgeting for meals um, when you are thinking about the living costs and that sort of thing, um, because it isn't um, part of the accommodation as I mentioned previously. Um, so yeah, certainly keep that in mind as you are um, thinking about how much it's all gonna cost and um, the benefits of studying with us in Sydney as well. Um, but I certainly hope you think about it. It is a stunning city um, and all students say that it is you know, a highlight of their undergraduate degree studying with us. Um, it's such a beautiful city and there's so much to see and do um, and so many wonderful people to meet as well. So I hope you study somewhere and I certainly hope you choose Macquarie and Sydney, Australia. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Leanne. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Um, everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact the Center for Global Education. Contact me, wkewing at noctrl.edu. Thank you.